So good evening, everyone. Um, it's always good to be here with you. So our um, uh, reflection of tonight is to bring um, a little bit about what means this uh, statement that was made by Jesus about the promised consoler. So in Spiritism, we believe that um, Spiritism is considered the third revelation. So in order for us to talk about revelation and about consolation, it's, it's good for us to go back in time and try to identify when uh, all these things happen, okay? And what means this consolation that Jesus promised to us. So especially nowadays that we live in a society that uh, it seems that everybody is stressed all the time, isn't it? Or sad all the time, or depressed all the time. So we need a lot of consolation. So when we say we, means from here, the speaker, to the whole planet, okay? So we are not here in the position to be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a situation that we are better than others. Now we are here as a student and learn about how to cope with those stress or, you know, what is um, this consolation that we are looking for. So let's try to define what consoler means. Consoler is to serve as a source of comfort to someone in disappointment, loss, sadness. So as I mentioned, like, you know, only those that feels uh, that life is not fair, <laughs> you know, that uh, there is something wrong, needs to be consoled. Because those that are happy and completely fulfilled is not in need of consolation. True or false? Good. So if we go back in time and study the history of humankind, so the first time we identified uh, that our society decided to implement laws was about 3.3 thousand years ago. Before that, how was, li how was life? Rough. How is the system, the, do, before Moses, for those that went to school, that has history, um, so how was, how was life in that time? I'm not talking about material life, because material lives are rough. We didn't have electricity, we didn't have, you know, all the commodities that we have nowadays. Was a survive mode all the time. You know, you have your house here, but you don't know if tomorrow someone come and steal your property and kill your family and take possession of everything. There is no laws. You know, in family, Family situation was not like today, that we have, you know, very well defined. So, so it was important that uh, someone needs to step up and say, hey, enough is enough. Okay, we need to put order in this planet. Okay, so that's why come the first revelation for those that has been, not for those, for majority of the people in this planet, know what the Ten Commandments is. Do you? So Moses was the one that brought this idea that there is certain behavior that we as hum human beings in that time was doing that was not okay anymore. So it's time to stop. And so we're not gonna go deep on this because we know the history of the Hebrew, you know, that they were slaves in the Egypt and they were like, um, Moses was leading them to the promised land and they are not even like because of time, they are not like kind of like um, um, in certain way um, happy because this promised land no, never, never arrived. So they start to do things, you know, and, and that's why Moses was inspired to go and to bring the Ten Commandments. So that was the first revelation. Then um, 2000 years ago, about 1.3 uh, 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 thousand years after Moses, 
comes Jesus. And Jesus brings another message. Not destroying what Moses was brought, had brought, but adding more in this um, uh, um, way that our society needs to live. Because what happened after Moses and Jesus? Although we had the Ten Commandments and more 600 laws, civil laws, that the Jewish community put together in order to keep order in the society, but it still was not the ideal. So one of the law that, for example, was common in Moses' law is that, okay, if you commit adultery, what happened to the women? What happened? Stoned. And that is the beautiful passage of Jesus uh, that when the woman was about to be stoned, what happened? He said the famous statement, for those that has no sin that throw the first stone. So Jesus brought a different way to interpret the law and add more. But then comes the third revelation. And we in spirituals believe that the third revelation is the spiritual teaching. And I'm trying to make, I will try to make a statement here, an argument, based on what we learn in the spiritual teaching, why what Jesus has said that will go, but will send a promise consoler means, and how the spirit teach fits on that promise that was uh, um, brought by Jesus. We need to do this analysis, doing a, um, a to put everything in context about time, culture, to bring why Jesus didn't said everything. Why in that time was not, we would say was not like um, uh, useful for Jesus to tell everything for that community. We're gonna go a little bit deep on this as we uh, con continue our, our presentation. So this passage about the promise consoler, we can find in the, in the gospel according to Spiritism, chapter six, item three, but also it's from the gospel of John, um, ch uh, chapter 14, verses 15, 17, and 26. I'm gonna read and then we're gonna discuss about. So before Jesus returned to the spiritual plane, so he said to the disciple, of course, you know, we, for those people that are immigrant here, in this life, we know when we leave our mother uh, land and go to other place, it's always a commotion. So that's what happened at that time. The disciple was a little bit distressed about having the master go away and without any uh, um, you know, clue when they're going to meet the master again. So Jesus said, if you loved me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to my father, and he will send you another consoler so that he may remain with you forever. This consoler is the spirit of truth. And then he continued, whom the world cannot receive because it neither seen him nor knows him. But as for you, you will know him because he will remain with you and will be among you. But the Consoler, who is the Holy Spirit, whom may, my Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will enable you to remember everything that I have said to you. Period. So let us go back on this statement that Jesus made and analyze a um, couple of things of this um, statement. First, I highlight over there. When they say I'm not a consoler, what this means for us is that although Jesus brought some consolation, was not complete, was not enough, because he couldn't say everything that he would like to say. It's like parent cannot sit the children, especially like children, 
and explain all the complexity of a marital life because the, the child is not yet in the mind condition to understand. So it is important for the parent to wait until the child becomes a young adult that knows all the things so we can put in perspective what means to live together, you know? So when he said another consoler, Jesus was saying, look, you guys are not going to be abandoned. Um, I will pray to my father. And that's something interesting. When Jesus said, I will pray to my father, means that Jesus was not God. Okay? So let us make the disclaimer here. Because if this was God, he would say, I will send. I will as God, as the all-powerful, almighty. I will send the consoler later. So this is one highlight that we can bring from that. What is another highlight in this statement? When they say, because either because neither sees him nor knows him. Okay, so what is this? So it's a consoler that you cannot see. People is not going to see, but also is not going to know. What is this? So here it brings something interesting, which means that if it is a person, people you're going to see might not even agree or follow that consoler, but we will get to know. Okay? So... It's not a person. It's not a group of things. Because if it was, either people are going to see, but not going to follow, but it's not going to agree. So that's one thing that we can highlight from this, from this statement. The other thing that is the most important here for us to understand this passage of Jesus from, from, from the gospel, we need to fix that, though. <laughs> so it's the last part of the statement. And I will read so he said that this console will teach you all things and we will enable you to remember everything that I have said to you. Okay, pause. So what Jesus tried to do here? Jesus is doing like kind of a premonition, isn't it? Because how come Jesus will send something that, you know, he's assuming that we will forget what he's teaching? Or he was already predicting that we we're going to change the message. So a, there is a need to send a co consoler to clarify. Let's bring this to a practical way. For example, I'm here, and then I am you know, bring some information. You may go out. After a couple of years, you're going to try to tell some other group about the information you received here. And what is the guarantee that the information is going to be exactly the same? So Jesus, by knowing our nature, he already predicting that there is a need to have a, uh, something that will re reveal or revise the teaching because we will be changed. Another thing that he mentioned here, that we will teach all things, which means that what Jesus brought to us was not at all, was not all things. So, um, okay, so how come? I thought the Bible is the holy truth and everything that's in the gospel is set in stone. How come now Jesus is saying that, that there is a consoler that will implement, not change, implement, or implement the message, and also uh, help to remember the original message that was changed, would be changed. So based on this information, and of course, you can go back and read more in the gospel, and you can ask, okay, so how can we con contextualize this? What Jesus didn't say in that time that now there is the, a need that a consoler will come and say. Okay, we see a lot of passages in the gospel that um, even Jesus tried to teach, it seems that was not understood. And the famous passage is the passage, the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus about uh, how Nicodemus was like, Master, 
how should I, what should I do to achieve to go to the kingdom of heaven? So everybody, even nowadays, we are concerned about not going, not going to hell, but go to heaven, isn't it? So in that time, everybody was also concerned about go to heaven. So what is the formula? What is the 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 guidelines. So, and Jesus mentioned that, you know, unless you are not born from, you need to be born from water and spirit in order to, you know, that is the famous fra phrase. But then he was questioned, but how come, how come I'm going to go back to the womb of my mother if I'm here? So, Jesus was talking about what? Reincarnation. In order for us to progress, we need to Go and come back, go and come back, like go to school every day. And if you wanted to have, like, you know, a degree, you need to go, you know, you have some, like, temporary vacation. And we approach now the summer vacation here in the U.S. in order for us to, you know, regroup our mind, and then we need to go back to school again. Okay? So this is important. It's important that Jesus knew. He came and he knew the stage of ev ev evolution we were in that time. And he not only brought the example, but also he already predicted, he already was like in a position to see what our society is going to be. Because here there is something that we learn in spiritism. He knows that we have free will. And we're going to receive that message that he has brought to us. But it's going to be up to us to put those messages and leave the message. And he did his part. So he passed the ball to us. And now it's up to us to carry this, you know, this message in our life and as a community. So now let's go back and talk about those revelations. Characteristic of these three revelations, okay? So what's the first revelation bring to us? The first revelation that was brought by Moses has this characteristic. Everything uh, would be says like this. You shall not have other gods. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not desire, and dot, dot, dot. Everything was in the negative. You shall not do this, you shall not do that, you shall not. Okay? So that's the first revelation. So when Jesus came, he brought a little bit the opposite. The message of Jesus was, you shall love your neighbor, you shall love yourself, you shall forgive, you shall turn to other cheek, you shall... There is nothing say, you shall not. Why? Because Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill and to add a little bit more. So let us meditate on this when we analyze the teachings that we learn from the Old Testament and from the New Testament. We are not here saying that this teaching is wrong. No, this teaching is perfectly acceptable because if we don't have this as a foundation, we cannot talk about the the the. the the unconditional love. Because the unconditional love is going to respect all aspects of the equation. Okay? So, and other thing that we need to put in perspective here is that according to the level of evolution of the population at that time, this was the best for that community, that society. The society was the rare, was like there is, is outlaws. So we need to put a break. So by saying you shall not, so we intimidate some behaviors that was not accepted in the human kingdom. Because this behavior here is from the animal kingdom. Okay? So, but Jesus came and gave a little bit leeway to the society say, okay, here is what you should do it, and brought all the positive side of our nature as human, okay? Now, what we think the third revelation would say? I'm going to open the microphone because I want to listen. Huh? 
here, so you want to say something? Since you are sitting in the front. No one wants to make a comment. What do, what do you predict what the third evaluation is going to say? Professor Yasko Arakawa? Well, first he said uh, that he also didn't come to destroy none of those first uh, revelation, mm -hmm. teachings, laws, guidelines. But because it's already 1800, uh, you know, we already had evolved so much as a civilization, although we were still fighting in wars, but we won't uh, kill each other. But still I feel this part of love, <laughs> and love the enemy, uh, more than the other, you know, neighbor is very difficult. So I think he came to, how to say, to um, say that make a statement. Make a statement that we should stay. But I think the clear, more clear thing, although was was before, but I think was the, uh, the our nature uh, as an immortal being that we will not disappear uh, after we lose our body, that we are spirit, we not this body. And also the, the mercy of God, the justice, divine justice, based in uh, the reincarnation, and also that the proof that this spirit world, spiritual world, exists. So through the mediumship, we could prove and contact with that spiritual world, I think. OK. It's valid. Any other comment? Paula, can you pass the microphone for Paula in the back, please? I think in line with. Um, all revelations, they're giving us new things to aspire to. And we really have grown and matured through evolution. And spiritually, I think the newer, like transpersonal psychologies that Joanna DeAngelis brings us are really where we're headed. That you would not be separate from spirit every second of your life. And Correct. as you live in accord with the presence of spirit, um, you don't really need all those guidelines because every fiber in your being knows when you are off course. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, that was good. Um, but because we have a little space over there, I cannot add all this information, so we already have all this information. So the third revelation, as we understand, that is the fulfillment of a promise that we call the promised consoler by Jesus, um, came in 1857 with the publication of the Spirit's book. I'm going to make an argument on this. And then followed by the publication of the other books. So Daniel, why are you saying that? Why you say that Spirit is a revelation? Well, do you remember what Jesus says that was by analyze the statement, we identify first is not a person. Because all the, the first revelation was one person, the second was uh, not one person was Jesus, and now the third revelation is a body of knowledge. It's not one person, it's not one group. But we understand the spiritist, spiritist codification fulfill that promise. But we are not here in a position to say that this is the whole truth. Because for those that know the spiritist teaching, we're going to identify that what we have here has been said throughout all humankind. What we have here is a compilation of this information in a concentrated way, in a, in a, in a guideline that we don't need to, you know, um, get, you know, spend hours Googling, Googling or go to different libraries because this touch on every point of our life, the life that we have. We, with one addition, 
not only about the physical, but also the spiritual life. We go to the university, study science of matter. We go to the church, talk about our spiritual behavior, spiritual life. But we don't find anything that combine the science of matter with the science of spirit. If you find, bring to me, because I wanted to add my knowledge. We don't. You ask about the universe. There is information here about the universe. You ask about how, what Jesus meant when he talked about parable. You come to the gospel according to spiritism. You ask about the interaction between the spiritual life and the material life, mediums books. You ask about hope and solace, heaven and hell. Read the books, and you're going to see that it's not saying anything new. It's just compile all the information that we find throughout humankind, include Jesus' information, and put in a more understandable way. Okay? So, with the publication of this book, then it starts to bring, you know, during like 14 years, Kardec uh, published not only this book, but all the materials that is not in this book, for example, the, the review, uh, um, the Spiritist Review, it was the, we'll say like, you know, where he used to publish all the communication that was not added in, this, in these books here. So this third revelation will explain why we should not and why we should do it. So if we, so the first one is more in the don't and shall not, do or you should, you should, and the third one, we're going to explain why. That's it. We are not adding more. It's the third revelation is not creating new paradigm. Paradigm? That's the word? It's not creating new formula. It just makes things more easy for us to chew, to understand. Explain the mechanism why we shall and shall not. And bring what? If we explain the mechanism, we bring what? Consequences consequences. And here is the beauty of the third revelation. Is that for the first revelation, if you do something that was not in accord with the law, there is an outside mechanism that will judge you and will apply the consequences. The second revelation that was the revelation did brought by Jesus was a revelation of accept and not do anything. Okay? Like, it's up to you. You do this, you have the consequence. But the third revelation explains that this judgment is inside of us. It's our conscience. So it's not like God is going to punish me, God is this, because that's what the first and the second revelation somehow brings to us. Oh, it's a punish. God is this God that will punish you. No, God creates law. And once we are immersed in these laws, that is a consequence of, of what we do it. But then the third revelation bring the explanation about these laws, that this div is divine laws that applies to everything, applies to matter, apply to living being, and apply to the universe. You know, the rotation of the planet, our solar system, there is a law that governs that movement. Can you imagine if suddenly the planet Earth decides to rotate a little bit slow? What's going to happen with our solar system? It's going to break the system. What happens if, if uh, an organ in your body decides not to follow the mechanism of the function? The liver decides, okay, guess, guess why? Guess what? Today, I'm not going to process any food that you eat. What's going to happen? Huh? I'm on strike. Oh, yeah, the liver decides to go, uh, uh, yeah, to be on strike. You know, it's going to be complicated. Your intestine is the worst, isn't it? If you decide not to work properly, what's going to happen? So everything that is law from the micro, the microorganisms to the macro. So there is laws. And the spiritualists come and bring a little bit of information 
uh, that, you know, there is a cause and effect. There is a consequence. But also there is reward in life, okay? So this is, this is for us to understand about this promise consoler, okay? So it's up to you to go and, and uh, look in the statement again, read the gospel, and try to see what fits in our knowledge nowadays that fulfill that promise that Jesus says. So nowadays, we can easily, we have, we can get together here, we can talk about um, any subject. Nobody is going to come and close this environment or stop us. Why? Because through these centuries that we have been going through since the first revelation, we have grown as human. We have implemented laws. We have uh, advanced in our science and technology. Our cognitive process become more clear, you know? Can you, can you believe 500 years ago you have to talk about the universe? And we know this, you know? You know, someone decided to say, hey, you know, we are, not the, we are not the center of the universe. This planet here is not the center of the universe. Okay, so what happened to that person? He almost, you know, was um, killed or burned at stake. So nowadays we can say whatever we want. We can write books, we can bring out theories, you know, and it is open to everybody to analyze. And so we become more mature. So we are more mature in terms of um, intellectual um, approach uh, our science has developed a lot, that we are here, we are like webcasting, people are watching this in another part of this planet, probably, I hope. If not, it's gonna watch this in a recording version. So we are interconnected in a way that we never thought. Now, by see how much we have advanced uh, compared to 3,000 years ago, can you picture 3,000 years from now? where we gonna be? Probably one thing for sure, our body is not gonna be like this. Hair is not gonna be so important for the women because hair is something that will disappear as Chris is already <laughs> in the process, isn't it Chris? It's gonna disappear. I mean, certain thing of our body will change you know, I don't know it's going to be 3,000 years, from, so I don't want to even predict. I'm happy with this uh, uh, body that we have, but things are going to change. The way we treat disease is going to change. For example, cancer, cancer treatment is going to be considered a absurd in 2,000 years from now. Chemotherapy, this is like, it's gonna, we compare that as a mutilation when we see like that was done 200 years ago before, you know, the discovery of uh, antibiotics. So there is a lot of things that we see nowadays that will change. The beauty, the, be the, the change of the body matter is not so important. The important is that how we gonna relate to one another. That is gonna be the beauty of our society. Daniel, really? Do you see this happen? Why not? Let's move on. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things about the third revelation. Now that we discuss about this three revelation, let's concentrate a little bit about the third revelation that we um, believe that is um, these um, teachings. One thing that we wanted to say and make a disclaimer about spiritism, that spiritism is not stagnate. It's not something like set in stone. As size advanced, as we grow, as we advance, this teaching also will be revealed more. It's not that these five books, that's it. This is like the foundation, but will be developed as will new information is gonna be bring. So after this five book, we have the Andrea Luis series that brings a lot of information about the other side. So we already add, né? the information of these teachings. So 
For example, when we look at, let's make a evaluation, not a judgment about the Bible. So the Bible was wrote for many people through many centuries. Took, I don't know, a thousand years to, to have what we have nowadays. So we are not here saying that is the information that is wrong. No, it's not wrong. But it was information that was written in a period of a thousand years with different author that put together and someone one day compiled and put everything together. So this has these five books and new information is adding as we grow. But the Bible will reach a time that stopped. We cannot add anything in the Bible anymore. We can remove. It depends on which congregation you are. You can change the text. And we need to be careful because this also can happen with this. You, we don't know a hundred years from now, two hundred years, people may come and change the text. But here, this thing came in the right time. Why? Because in the 1800s, it took 18th century since Jesus made the promise to this information come. Daniel, why the information didn't come like a thousand years after he said that? Okay, Jesus died in the year 33. Let's pretend that he said this in the year 33. So a thousand years after that, how our society was living? We have what? Dark age. What's the dark age means? We, we, we enter a period of our uh, um, lives that the church rules everything. The prosecution to those that was not accord to the church teaching was in its peak. The Crusades became a movement that killed a lot of people in the name of Jesus. So how come the promised console we arrive in that time? We are not ready. So we need to have the proper time. So when this phase pass that ends in 1600, 1700, and now the industrial revolution starts to happen, science starts to grow, art and poetry starts to emerge, music starts to emerge, then we have a perfect scenario for this information to come. And the information starts to come with the manifestation, the physical manifestation of the spirit through the um, uh, mediums. And the initial focus happened here in New York, upstate New York with the Fox Sisters. In 1848, so picture 1848, 31, March 31st, 1848, the phenomenon starts to happen in Hydesville, upstate New York, with these two sisters that start to hear not. It was not an intellectual phenomenon, it was a physical phenomenon. Why came like that? Because they couldn't come and do other information. This was a movement that was very well organized by the superior spirit, and we believe that in the top of this group of spirit, Jesus was, you know, the one. Because he was the one that promised. So it means he is behind of this process that was directed by the Father, God. So the third revelation, and I brought this, uh, st uh, this uh, quote, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Which truth we are you talking about? This is the question. What is the truth Jesus was talking about? What's the truth Jesus was talking about? When Jesus was here, what Jesus brought to us? Majority of Jesus brought two, three things that we can identify in his life. Three. Um, he told parables. He healed people. And he lived the message. If we need to do a highlight in Jesus, that's three things that he did 100%. Check. Great A plus for Jesus. Isn't it? Story, teaching, through parables. Why parables? Why Jesus didn't brought, you know, you know, there is a spiritual world, you know, you need to reincarnate back and forth until you get right. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You need to reincarnate with that person if you... Why he didn't say that? Jesus, why did you say that? Well, because first it's going to be um, a waste of time. There is no cognitive process in the, the mind of that uh, society to understand that. Because to tell about reincarnation, we need to have some prerequisite. We need to have some prerequisite. We need to have some um, uh, uh, intellectual process to make sense. Otherwise, it becomes something like, okay, it, what is this? Uh, you know, doesn't make sense. So, what Jesus was talking about? He was talking about his kingdom. What, what means his kingdom, Jesus' kingdom? He was talking about something that is very common in this teaching, about the future life. What is the future life? Then I don't want you to worry about the future life. I want you to worry about this life here. Well, this life here depends how you live. You determine your future life. Simple, okay? That's why, that's why the parable and the way Jesus was brought in the live and the heal and tell the person, you know, you want to be healed, you, you, have, you need to have faith, go and sin no more. Think about the future, okay? So when we look at the, these uh, teachings, so of course he'll talk about, you know, this, the, the Jesus kingdom would be the, the truth, it would be like the, what he was uh, directors. But when you talk about this future life, when we talk about truth, when you talk about what's right, we need to add these two aspects, the moral and the intellectual. And in order for us to um, sediment, in order for us to, um, in our society, in our level of a humankind, to make something truly acceptable, we need at least to have these three aspects of the human knowledge, three. Because we can explain very well use one aspect, science, for example. I need this microphone to speak to you so you can, or to the people that's in the internet, or to amplify my voice, you know, is a justification that is possible because science put together all the, 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 the equipment, the elements, for us to have this uh, uh, possibility. But what this microphone will help in my life, my pain, my suffering? So that's another question, okay? So we need to tie everything in our life in a way that everything we have, we need to add in our context that will help us to achieve the future life, okay? In that way, philosophy, what is philosophy based on? Question, isn't it? This is a philosophic book in a sense that was made with question and answer. If we don't ask questions, we become a complainer of life. <laughs> you know, exactly. We, we become just, we but here is something. To ask questions, we need also to ask the right questions. Because sometimes we ask questions that it's difficult to get an answer because the question was not properly asked. Religion, because there is no conversation in future life if you don't assume that there is a creator. We must accept that life didn't come from nothing, that there is a creator. There is someone that is all powerful, all intelligence, that knows everything, that creates everything. Don't ask me the nature of this individual because I don't know. I just know that he's perfect, he's loving, he's, he's everywhere, you know, he or she or it. There is no gender for the creator. We are the one that put gender, okay? So that's compiled the spiritist teaching. So the spiritist teachings is the teaching that was brought to us by a group of spirit. Daniel, are all these spirit that brought this teaching pure spirit? No. The same way that Jesus collect 12 disciples, that was not pure, that was not like Jesus. Jesus was pure spirit, the master. But he invited 12 
to help them in the ministry of his teaching. Now, the spirit teaching, the spirits that brought this teaching, including this guy here, Benjamin Franklin, and this we named this room because Benjamin Frank was an American spirit, or American inventor, he incarnated in the US during, he's one of the founder fathers. And if we look at in this book, all the spirit that happens to bring the answers, we have, majority of them, they were priests. Priest. They're Catholic, Catholic uh, priest, saint, because there is no spiritism before that. So all the mains that, that did the profound transformation in their life were invited by whom? By the master, by Jesus, that never reveal his name, but in spiritism, we believe when we say the spirit of truth, some scholar, we think that the spirit of truth was Jesus. Okay? So help to bring this message. So the answers that we have here, including Kardec. Kardec, he was the incarnate spirit. But we know that Kardec and the group of spirit that helped to bring those information, they were in the same level of evolution. They were not perfect. Not perfect, okay? But they were in the same level of evolution. They, are, they were a little bit ahead of us. <clears throat> so now, very fast, this third revelation is talking about what? When we, when we learn about spiritism, about question, first question, who am I? Who are we? Where did we come from? Where am I here? The question, what am I doing here? I'm here just to you know, work, go home, pay my bill, raise my family. That's it. And then we die, that's it? That's why we are here? What we are doing here for the immigrant one that came to the US? It's just like take care of the family? No, this is obligation. Let's put separate here what we need to understand in our life. There is obligation. It's like I tell my daughter sometimes, clean your room. Sorry, sorry to put you in the spot. <laughs> clean your room means obligation. There is no discussion, it's obligation. It's your, your chair in the, in the household, okay? Now, there is other thing that can be discussable, just dis dis discuss it, you know? So, come here, be a good person, take care of your family, be responsible, be a good employee, obey the law is an obligation. We are not doing anything more to, you know? The Spirit's book, there is a question, very interesting question. The question is about, Okay, so if I don't do evil, but if I don't, I don't, I don't do any evil, so I didn't commit anything, I just fulfilled the law, so I'm okay, you move to the next step. They say, no. You must do good. Okay, what is do good? Take care of my family, be a good employee, respect the law, is obligation. What is the good, do good? Do good is do something that's go beyond of your obligation. Go beyond of your obligation. So it's something that what you do is the altruist action. What you do will make an impact on your community. Will make an impact on your family. Will make an impact on your work. So that is you know, what is expected for us to do here. And the question, where we go? The last question we already know. We're gonna go to a place that's depending of how we live today. It's gonna be the consequence, okay? So, and that is something that is individual. So we are not here to judge anyone. And even our uh, family have the right to judge us because at the end of the day, it's between us and God and the law. Um, because it's moral consequences, okay? Everything that is consequence. So, um, basically, spiritism touching these three aspects, religion, philosophy, science. So, when we talk about science, what means science? It's not the science of the lab. We are not here to replace the, the uh, system that we already created to implement our life, that is to help us live a better life. All this is consequence of we as co-creator, okay? So we can get stuff and 
get matter and make matter intelligible, okay, useful. So that is our, I would say, uh, uh, merit. This is our merit. We are using our intelligence to, you know, create things, material that make our life much better. So this is, this is the conventional science. The science that we talk here is about the science of the spirit. Is not the science of the matter. Is the interaction between these two places, the spiritual one and the material one. Because we as a spirit live in a, in a physical body, we can influence matter. But matter also has an influence back to us. How can we deal with this? Okay. So what happens when we lose loved ones? That's what the spirit science comes. So what happened in our life after here, after life? Can I communicate with my loved one? What is the mechanism I can do in my day-to-day -day life that will attract good spirit? Why my life is become upside down? Is there a spiritual influences? Are there a spirit here? Are there spirit in my house? Which kind of spirit are in my house? All these questions we have here. Well, the kind of spirit are in your house is a spirit that likes the thing that you do. For example, if you like to play heavy metal music, don't expect that spirit like, you know, Madre Teresa de Calcutta is gonna come when you are playing your heavy metal music. But if you like sport, you're going to have a spirit that likes sport. I like soccer, so when I watch my soccer game, what kind of spirit is there in my house? Spirit that might like the sport. If you like UFC, what kind of spirit will be in the living room when you watch UFC? What kind of movie you watch? You watch soap opera. We watch um, horror movies. So this is not big deal. This is just like the nature of the beast. This is what happened. Okay? So what kind of thought do we have? I'm all the time obsessed with money. So what kind of spirit is connected to you? With, what is the kind of habit you have? You know? So are you a heavy drinker? Have eating? Have this? Have that? You have a spirit that like those is going to be connected to us. That's not a big deal, folks. That's not a big deal. You know? It's just like adding the invisible being with those that surround you. Which kind of friends do you have? So the spiritual friend you have is very close to the kind of friend you have. Well, if you come here to the spirit center, if you have the habit to always, you're going to have a spirit that also has those kind of habit. The question is, is that bad or good? We don't know. We are not here to tell you what's better. It's up to you to decide. It's your life. It's your life. Jesus is not going to come here and say, hey, don't do this. It's wrong. Jesus is not going to do that. But here is the thing. Once we know this teaching, and this teaching doesn't prohibit anything, the beauty of spiritism is that we can do whatever we want. But there is an expectation because once we do, once we learn, our mind where the laws of God is implanted will send the signal that what we're doing is not right. But this also says that we should forgive seven times seven, seven, like forever. So when he said we should forgive others, he also implied that we should forgive ourselves. Forgive ourselves is the first thing. So we just realize that, you know, I was in this route and suddenly I realized that I was not doing the right thing. But, you know, always there is time, you know. So also one of the things that define this spiritism is they study the origin, the nature, and the destiny of spirit and its relationship with the corporeal world. world. It's beautiful to have these teachings because we don't, everything that perish, everything that perish like matter has a time to finish, has a time, is, is like has an expiration date, you know? It's a product, has an expiration date. 
So, but when you bring a perspective, that relationship that we doesn't have expiration date is very consoling. When we lose our parent or our loved one, and we know that we're gonna meet this person one day, that this person we can meet through our dreams by doing the intelligent sleep is very consoling. So, so the beauty of the third revelation is that it's gonna include the first and the second and add these little things that, what is that? The rational part, very good. So, and also allow us to question. Nobody here is gonna come to you and say, no, you cannot ask any question. Is already said here in this book. You know, nobody's gonna tell this. I have, uh, this week, I have a back and forth communication with uh, uh, someone um, in New Jersey. And the person has bring some of the insight uh, about his life and how he's very happy, very enthusiastic about this teaching. And, but also he brought some, not criticism, some like, um, his personal view and how he would tackle different points on this teaching. So it's, beauty. it's beautiful because what I told him is, uh, look, the beauty of spiritism is that we allow it to question, we allow it to have doubt, um, and nobody's going to come and prosecute you. That was not true like a thousand years ago. I would go a little bit, probably 300 years ago, 200, okay? So the main principle of spiritism to finalize the existence of God, the mortality of the soul, reincarnation, multitude of the inhabited planet, communication of the spirit. So this is the main principle, okay? So it's like if you go to school, college, you study math, biology, there is some principle that is in, uh, that you need to take in consideration in order to move on, you know? So in spiritism, we cannot even start the conversation if we don't believe in a creator. So it is the number one. There is a position. This book, the first question is about you know, what is God? Immortality of the soul. We are immortal being. We are not eternal, okay? What is the difference of eternal and immortal? Eternal is something that has no beginning, no end. Okay? So only God is eternal. When we say, or oh, we have an eternal life, could be okay, but you need to assume that you are created. Okay? So for us, it's better say that we are immortal. We never die. We have one life that come incarnate, discarnate, one life only. But we have multiple experience in a physical body. Reincarnation is about multitude of inhabited planet. In the house of my father, there is many mansion. In the, the kingdom of my father, there is many mansion. The kingdom. Which kingdom Jesus was talking about? Multitude of inhabited world. Okay? It's the universe, communication of the spirit. We just lose the physical body, but we are connected. We are connected. Once, once you have the relationship in family, First of all, our relationship here in your family was not the first one, okay? It's probably you have been incarnate, reincarnate with a group of people, you know, and just change position. This reincarnation, you're the husband, the next, maybe you're the son, blah, 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 the grandfather, that's it, <coughs> okay? Once we have this, this is gonna stay forever. It's gonna be eternal. In the book Liberation that we, we just studied in our home um, last year, um, that is, is about a case about a mother, a mother that has been trying for 300 years or more, I think. Do you remember, sir? 300 years, the Gregorio. His, um, her son is in the lower zone. He was the, uh, the chief of a group, a city, a gang, that has been, you know, doing bad stuff for many years. 300 years, I think, couple centuries, isn't it, Sarah? And the mother that's more involved plan has been trying to rescue him 
for that life for 300 years. So there is case that, you know, mothers and fathers and family members are connected to, even though if you decide to go to a different way, there is a point of connect that never is going to be broke up completely, you know. We might be separated from men in some centuries, but one day we're going to come back to it. And the ultimate goal is the perfect life, perfect spirit. Other principle, spiritual principle, forget of, of the past, law of cause and effect, free will, evolution, rational faith, moral divine laws, Jesus as our mother and guide. We, in spiritism, we don't discard the other prophets like Buddha, you know, Gandhi, other philosophers. So we recognize all the other religion, or leader, or prophet as a part of this team of spirit that came to help us to evolve as a society, okay? The future life, peri-spirit, or we have a spiritual body, and we have discussed about this. The spiritual plane or the spiritual world is our primary one. Daniel, what is that? Is this a, pr no, this is temporary because we are immersed in a physical body that will perish. So the only thing that doesn't perish is the spirit and the spiritual body because we are connected uh, connect to the spirit. So in this part of the, the conversation between Jesus and Pilate, Pilate asked, are you the king, the king of G the, the Jewish? And Jesus um, responded to him, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my people would have fought to prevent my failing into the hand of the Jewish, but my kingdom is not here. Pilate said to him, then you are king? Jesus replied, you have said it. I'm, I'm a king. I was not born, nor did I come into this world except to bear witness to the truth. Whoever belongs to the truth hears my voice. But what, what Jesus was telling this, you know? Basically, Jesus said, whatever has the kind of life that I have is going to resonate with my teachings. So that's the invitation. The invitation is for us to imitate Jesus, to ask the question, what did Jesus do if he was in this situation? So this is just a part of the gospel um, uh, during the, the... So again, I highlight over there about the kingdom of Jesus. Jesus was talking about what? Not this life. He has talked about the future life. So if you look at what Jesus has said, he was said, telling us that this is not the whole truth here. We, the thing is much, yeah, he was talking about the future life, as we put it here. That would be our ultimate goal, you know? And the question is that, you know, sometimes we ask, are we going backwards? Are we like, you know? And Kardec asked this question, and this question is question 784. Humankind's perversity is very severe. Doesn't seem that they are regressing instead, in, instead of progressing, at least from a moral point of view. Very updated question, isn't it? Very, you know, up to date. So, and the answer is like this. You are mistaken. So, the spirit is not like easy with Kardec. They are like, Tough, like you are mistaken, you are wrong. Okay, I can see the spirit like put the finger like this. I do it, I'm just doing that's not nice. Sorry about that. Uh, so you are mistaken. Observe the hole closely, and you see that they are advancing because they understand better what is evil, and day by day they ref they reform their abuse. The excess of evil will make them understand the need for good and reforms. Folks, that's what has been happening the last 100 years. Picture life in the United States of America 60 years ago. And I think Paula can be a witness here, isn't it, Paula? I mean, like, yeah, no, no, I'm not saying old. I'm saying that's very close. No, I'm not talking about age, Yasko. Please don't put me in the... Uh, I mean, because I was not here 60 years ago. I just want to I just wanna make a comparison. How was life 60 years ago for those that were living here? I was not here. 
<laughs> okay, I didn't say that. This is your assumption that I was not born. Maybe I was in the spiritual world living here among you guys. So, 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 so the idea is to have a reference point. Okay, we cannot make any conclusion or cannot make any um, an assumption if we don't have a reference point. We need to have a reference point for everything. So when the spirit answer here, you are mistaken and say, observe the whole closely. What means? Looking everything. Don't just look a little bit thing, just with one point of view. It's the whole view, okay? A point of view is just a point. It's just like a page of view, a book of view. You know, I'm just like, take this, um, that we say a point of view is just a little view, you know? So, but again, if we look at, it seems that we have going a little bit backward, but that's not true. I mean, although we turn on our local news, you see all these atrocities that happen, but the amount of goodness has also skyrocketed, isn't it? We're going to look at for things that we want to. And we are trying to make a nice statement on that. So, but if we look now, of course, there is a lot of things that we need to, to improve, yeah. But, I mean, look at, look at this room here. We are mixed race here. We have youngest here. We have women here. 200 years ago, you ask, you are not here. You are not here. Because you are women, you should be at home, and, you know, look for a rich husband to... Because that was the, the society in that time. So let us put everything in perspective so we can make the right judgment about life, okay? So to finalize, I'd like to bring this guy that made a huge change in this society here, Martin Luther King Jr. I'll bring some quotes for us to keep those quotes in our mind and, and, and see that, you know, it's not only this. It's a group of good spirit that has been helped our society. He said... Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Tell me if this does not resonate with Jesus' message. Tell me if this is the kind of approach and behavior we want our society to have that Jesus has brought to us 2,000 years ago. Take the first step in faith, so connect to the Almighty. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. Folks, we don't need to become Bill Gates to help. We can help with the re 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 resources that we have in the capacity that we can. That's it. So I, the way he said it's beautiful. It's so poetic, like, you know, you don't need to see the whole circle. Just take the first step. If you see darkness, don't worry about further. Just look here immediately what is in front of you, you know? One of the things that we learn, and this I learned with um, uh, Raul Teixeira, that was this great spiritual speaker in Brazil. When we moved to Baltimore, the first time he came to Baltimore, and he, we have a meeting with him in the university, and so one thing that he said to us in that time was a small group, probably about six people. And he said, you know, learn how to flourish in the place that God has put you. Which means that if you are here in the U.S., in Baltimore, Maryland, Pennsylvania, around here, our mission is here. And I remember in that time, I was like, we are like collecting stuff, sending things. Away and said, look, look around here and see what people need here in front of your eyes. Okay? I'm not saying that if you want to help Africa, Brazil, South America, other, you can do that, but also look around you and see how we you can help. To finalize, every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creativity, creative altruism, or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. Thank you. Have one question, probably one and a half because of time. Sorry about the time, but uh, so this is um, this is uh, the 
I realized that this talk was given before someone like five years ago, <laughs> but was not here. So I was talking to Leo. I said, huh, I think I gave this talk before. And I think I'm getting old, forgetting stuff. Question, any question, comment? If I don't have the answer, all the answers here. I think Leo has one. So you can you make a comment and. Can you go back to that triangle, um, science, religion, and philosophy? Um. One of the last, I think, the penal, yeah, or something, yeah. Um, <coughs> I was listening the other day. If the mid of 1800, it was the best time for the Spirit's teaching, for this third revelation to come. And they said that that window was crucial because before that, until beginning of 1800s or end of 1700s, the religion had a lot of, lot of power still. And after, in 1900, science got a very big peak, yeah. especially technology. Yeah. So the materialism okay. really picked up in the 1900s, in the 20th, uh, 20th century. So many people, including France, they uh, decide that uh, we don't need God because we can solve everything through technology, through understand DNA, whatever, genetics, etc. And philosophy was always something more soft. It's a soft science. And uh, I don't know the damage that those two could make, philo uh, religion and science. Philosophy is less capable of making a huge, although it could make. So my question now is, if Kardec's teaching came exactly 1850s, where religion was weakening, and science is still being picked up, what will be uh, our chance? <laughs> the chance for this spiritism to really uh, help us to evolve. So I'm thinking the following. The same science that almost put God outside, truth God outside, will help now because we have technology, through technology, through science, we can have uh, information about this transcendental life, which is, was before very difficult to prove. Well, spirit, oh, well, do I have another? Because now, with the same <coughs> technology, we have technology to resuscitate cardiac arrest, for instance. And then those that came back from near-death experience, they can report with details. Those that had out-of-body experience during resuscitation, they can prove with details that nobody could say, no, you are inventing. Like before, we said, well, you see the tunnel of light. Everybody see the tunnel of light, etc. They may be all religious. But now, now, the details through science and through MRI image, sophisticated image during, for instance, prayer, during mediumistic trends, is all documentable. You can document. So now I see and of course, philosophies always have to be because all these questions that you made there, they're all philosophical questions that Socrates made, all, all the other philosophers made. So what I'm thinking that, that the future will be a merge, not separate like this. Like religion is one thing, science is one thing, philosophy is another thing. No, it will have to merge. Science will be in the religion, religion will be in the science, philosophy will be inside the science and inside the religion, it's, and that's it. It will be a more homogeneous mix. That's what I think will be 
uh, the end. I don't know if you agree with that. No, no. The, yeah, you're right. Um, um, going back to um, about this, I agree with you about the time. That exactly was the the right time to bring this information uh, for the reason that you just point out. But here's the thing, that this information was coordinated by a pure spirit, that was Jesus. With the, the, um, the it was granted by the creator that was God. So we have to come, and they have plan A, B, C, and D. That was not, Kardec was the plan A. And Kardec asked the question, okay, if for by any chance I fail, they said, look, do you think you are impress impress how do you say that? Do you think you are you are not not replaceable? Um, and the spirit of truth said, look, we already have someone. If you fail, there is someone that will do that. Because this time is very crucial, it needs to be now. So the teaching would come no matter what. Kardec did very good because, you know, he was able to convey and to put all this information. So, and for those that uh, was here last Saturday and saw how his life was, the struggle that he went through, but he was able to accomplish and with uh, the limitation that that time was, he was able to put all this information together. But I agree with you, Yask. Now, what I see about, for example, near-death experience, all this thing is just come to validate what's already here. I think if we're not able to have the, uh, I would just say, the blueprint or the, the information, the theory beforehand, then it's going to be more complex because now we need to do the opposite way. With the, in the practical way, we need to translate to the, the theory. And the best way is like we create a hypothesis, a theory, a theory, and then, you know, the the, the project where is gonna is gonna just uh, confirm and fulfill. Leo, you have a, a comment, and and I believe. Uh, <coughs> Thank you. There's still, Paula. Is still alive. Okay. No, yeah. Thank you. Um, given that the world at the moment is experiencing a great deal of fear, anxiety, and upheaval, as you can see in the politics of, you know, like major countries, and there's a retreat phenomenon going on where people just want to retreat and get back kind of in their cave, what do you think are the key? I'm trying to think of your theme of consolation. If you're speaking with another person one-on-one, -on -one, they have no working knowledge of spiritism. What would you select simply as like the one or two features that can help someone who's struggling with all the many things people struggle with today? And it just in tune with the modern message of what spiritism is bringing for consolation. Good question. Two words for that. Watch and pray. There is not a magical bullet here. I mean, we are living a time that is supposed to be that way because we are in a transitional period. We are in the, when we say transitional, you may ask, Daniel, how long this is going to last? Well, it depends on us. How long is it going to last? You messed up your bedroom, and then you wanted to go out and have fun, and now <coughs> you, you will say, okay, how, how long is it going to last for me to clean my, my bedroom? is going to be proportional to the amount of mass you created. So, so <clears throat> when, when, um, when I talk to people, of course, we're not, we need to validate the suffering of uh, each one of us. First of all, we uh, have different experience in life. Maybe my pain, um, your pain or my pain or this group suffering is not equal. So we should not tackle in the same way. But one thing that applies to everybody is what Jesus told us. We should watch and pray. Why Jesus didn't say you should pray and watch? Why watch first? Because even the Creator is giving to us an opportunity to take responsibility. Well, I need to identify in my life, and I, in, for this question, Paula, is already in this book here. Okay, when, um, <clears throat> when Kardec asked, um, so what's the best way 
for I'm gonna paraphrase it because I don't know exactly. What's the best? Come on Thursday and they study for us the spirit's book. That's gonna. What's the best way for us to um, suffering mitigate mitigate our suffering? And the answer is one phrase. We need to know ourselves. That's it. And this was something that was said thousand centuries ago. So Socrates was the one that said that. You need to know. He read it. He read this was wrote in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a portal um, in Delphi, I think. So he, he read that, and then people attribute this to him. But we should know ourselves first. Second, we need to add what Jesus said. Watch and pray. So, But we can watch and pray if we also know ourselves. How, how do I know myself? How do I know it myself? I need to observe myself and say, okay, what makes me upset? And I need to find a strategy to work on that. Simple. There is no magic bullet. There is no, uh, uh, um, you know, it's just this. Y you can go to 300 psychologists, 300 priests, 300 professors, but at the end of the day, if you don't do this, it's like you go to the doctor, the doctor gives the medicine, but you don't take the medicine when you get home. So how come you're gonna cure, be cured, you know? So watch and pray, I think for me, is very important. We are surrounded by all this negativity, our planet. We, I mean like, depends how you tune in your mind, okay? So it depends how we tune your mind. See, there is thing that really is gonna put you outside of the track, so you need to think twice, you know? We are not perfect yet, we are not perfect. We are so easy to, um, to get caught up in the negativity nowadays, in the suffering, because a lot of people are suffering. In our family, we have our own um, concern as well. But how can I do deal with my suffering without perturb others? That is, is a, a valid question that we need to ask ourselves. So the beauty of spiritism is that we have all the elements to help us to live in this planet without belong to the planet. As Jesus says, live in the world without there is a, I, I, this thing is in Portuguese in my mind, I'm so sorry, without becoming a mundane person, you know? There is this word, mundane? Okay. So, yeah, my, I, I think my brain is already like give some tilt here. <laughs> okay, Leo. But, but I, I would say, I, I, you know, there is no much explanation. Say, so look, depends on the degree of the suffering, depends everything we need to see um, is a different case. You know, if it's someone that he is in a state of clinical problem, so we're gonna say, see a psychologist, see a doctor. But if it's someone that's open, so we can be a little bit more, you know, engage more in your in your religion. Um, you know, pay attention more which kind of people you hang out, which kind of influence you are receiving from your co-workers. Treat them well, but try to make your own routine, because sometimes we become immersed in the other people's routine. Mentally, we, I need to do this because my friends, because, no, why, you ask the question, why I need to do that? I mean, if you have time, do it. But if you think that it's not so health, the environment that you are doing just to please other people, please think twice. Because probably there is the problem. And we need to work this out. Leo, please. It, just a final comment, Daniel. Um, I know we were trying to get to um, the second part. When I started studying Spiritism and I looked at the first revelation, the second revelation, um, and the third revelation, you know, the first revelation always kind of came as scary and posing, you know, the Moses, the law, when we hear the word law, right? Um, and I think tonight was an, an emphasis to what I always, uh, I was able to develop with as far as understanding what these revelations were. Um, the first revelation, you know, bringing us our duty, you know, it w not only on on or here on planet Earth, but in the universe um, in general. Uh, the second revelation is our rights, and I think that 
uh, to complement the third revelation comes as a reminder of our most valuable right that we have, which is to be dutiful, to be a person who respects the, the law, respects one another. Um, and that, with that comes consequences with whatever action that we have. Um, because when we, when we see the directive, directives of you shall not or thy shall this, you know, you have to do this. People don't like that idea, but we forget that with that idea, with those ideas is what it, it, it came to be. It was the foundation to what we have nowadays, right? Um, and then the rights with, with Jesus saying, you know, shall love one another. And then the spiritism come and say, look, the, the most beautiful right that we have is to be dutiful is to respect one another, is to execute these foundations to the utmost uh, way that we will survive, <laughs> we will continue to live well, and progress as well. So it, it's definitely a good reminder to me and in, in, in emphasis to what I used to think, because a lot of people, when you talk about laws, you know, people sometimes they get upset by they, because they have to stop for a stop sign. <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, why is this here? Why is that? And we forget that we have limits, right? And when we learn this with the physical laws. Uh, so I think it's definitely a good reminder. So I thank you for, for this note. Um, the last part that I would like to comment as well that you brought is, you know, in terms of Jesus, um, as we mentioned, as you mentioned, the scholar brings to us the the idea that this 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 um, um, the spirit of truth being Jesus, um, and Jesus with being an enlightened spirit and and allowing us to be part of this this teaching, allowing us to shape who we are and not being the one saying you have to do this or that way. And I think this is um, brings another aspect of spiritism of allowing us and reminding us to be humble as well as we grow. And as we grow, we don't look at others saying, oh, you know, I went through that, that's petty. No, and no we, we hold ourselves and we, you know, we help one another to get to where we, we're supposed to be. So great highlights. Thank Very you. Very well said. Thank you, Leo.